Hey everyone, welcome to the Music City Surrey Showcase, sponsored by the City of Surrey. In this series, we plan to highlight the musical talent that Surrey has to offer. My name is Miles Philpot, and I am here at the Fusion Presents studio with a very special guest today. Today we are joined by Ashley Pater. Ashley, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's so nice to have you in the studio today, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. So, where I wanted to start was kind of just to rewind a bit. I kind of wanted you to tell us about your beginnings of music. I, I did a little bit of research on you. It looked like you grew up in a landscape of country music, going on drives with your mom and listening to country music, and you started performing at nine years old, it seems. So I was wondering if you could kind of bring us from that point in time to where you are now. Yeah, totally. Um, music has always been a part of my life, whether I knew it or not. Actually, apparently, while I was still in the womb, my mom would sing to me and she actually wrote me a song. And so I guess music was kind of in my bones that way. Mm -hmm. My mom won't admit that she has a voice. Um, so in the family, it's kind of like I get my voice from my mom and my hand from my dad because he loves an audience. Mm -hmm. So with my family, we, we're very musical in the sense that we sing all the time, dancing in the kitchen, all that kind of stuff, carpool karaoke. Oh, yeah. Um, my mom loves country music. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from. If you play the country radio right now, I could probably sing you every tune. It's just instilled in me somehow. But my grandfather on my mom's side actually taught himself how to play five different instruments. Wow, okay. So I think from all that kind of influence, it kind of got to me. And when I realized that music is an actual I don't know, thing that people get into, then I just wanted to be all about it. Right on. That's awesome to hear. And so... I mean, obviously 2020 hasn't gone as we have expected, right? And musicians have had to pivot, you know, yeah. shows have been canceled. A lot of people aren't motivated to, you know, get into the songwriting process and things, but you've been quite busy. You've released, I think it's four singles since COVID has started, right? And um, you have a Christmas single coming up. So how has, how is the, what has the songwriting process looked for like for you in this time? Well, Originally, if we, we're going to rewind it again. Okay, so sure, sure. my Take songwriting, it started um, with a full length mirror. Okay. I would sit in front of it and I'd get a dry erase marker. Mm -hmm. I'd write all over it. And by the time I got to the end of the mirror, I'd have a song. And then it kind of morphed into making drawings. So I just doodle. I'm not the best artist, so I wasn't sure what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I'd make sense of the photos and put it into a song. Or there's, I have so many ways. So <laughs> we're just naming all of them. I have another where... Like Wild Roses, for instance, mm -hmm. the tail track of my past EP. Yeah. Um, it came about, I, was, I heard the title, Wild Roses, and I was like, that'd be so cool to just have a song called that. So then I wrote a whole story around these Wild Roses. Mm -hmm. And um, so now I kind of just take a mixture of all that kind of stuff, or I'll think of a melody, I'll quickly jot that down, and the lyrics and all that same kind of thing nice yeah. that's awesome to hear yeah the songwriting process it's always so interesting to hear i love that so you would write on a mirror so you yeah. would sit on and you would write on the that's very so you're you're looking at yourself while you're writing the lyrics so yeah do you kind of have like um like that like self-reflection kind of, exactly <laughs> that, that, exactly you took the words right out of my mouth like you're reflecting as you're writing that's that's very cool so um another thing i wanted to actually ask about was you recently went on a tour yeah. Right? Like, I, I, I noticed I was following it a little bit. I was wondering if you could just tell us a bit more what that tour was for and um, and how, how you liked Life on the Road. Okay, first of all, I loved it. I'd go back in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Um, it was with Rise Up TV. Okay. And so it was a uh, Western and Eastern Canada tour. I took part in the Western tour for the first week, and second week was Eastern. So we started in Edmonton, ended in Vancouver, and then did a little boomerang around the Toronto area. But skipping Toronto because uh, it was a hot spot during that time. Yeah. So just to stay safe, um, I didn't think touring would be possible during this time because all my other gigs got canceled. And, you know, not going to lie, I was very sad. Um, yeah. And then this opportunity came up. I was like, this is kind of crazy, but I love it. And then so we took it on the road and we were able to follow all the precautions and all that kind of stuff. And it really worked out. That's awesome. Yeah, I've actually I've done a tour myself. It's so interesting. You really realize how big Canada is until you're driving across it. Hey, it's just yeah. like this wide, massive land. That's kind of crazy. Um, so another aspect I want to go into was. So I listened to your 2018 EP and kind of compared it to your music that you released this year. And there's a bit of a, not a discrepancy, but it's definitely an evolution, right? It mm -hmm. seemed like it kind of started off as alternative rock and now you're kind of more in the pop space. Can you talk us through what kind of, or what that transition looked like? Yeah, definitely. So 
as I said, I came from Country Roots. Mm -hmm. So when I got the opportunity to record this EP, I had all those influences and kind of wrapped it up into folk pop. But you know how long it takes to record that kind of thing. And so when it released, I was really excited about it. I was pumping out for months and months. And then I started to realize that it wasn't really me anymore. Mm -hmm. I was like, this isn't my style. It's kind of going to this next thing. So I still considered myself folk pop, but I wasn't really sure what I was going into. Then I was told my voice kind of sounded jazzy. And with, then I got a band, it sounded more rocky. And then, so I called it alternative pop. Mm -hmm. End goal is R&B. So we're getting there. <laughs> End goal is R&B. Yeah. Like oh, R&B. I love, love it. R&B. That genre. It's like, it, it's, there's, a, there's always a time for R&B, it seems. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where, where you take that. Um, so you are, you're 17 right That's now, right? Correct. Yes. So a lot of people would say you are miles ahead of people that are your age. So what kind of advice would you have for a young musician that's looking to just start off? Maybe they're 12 years old, maybe they're 15 years old. What kind of advice would you have for those people? To stay true to yourself. I know it's very cliche, but honestly, like um, my, my parents were very impressed with this when I would answer in an interview. They're like, well, who do you want to be like? Or who do you sound like? I'd be like, well, I just want to be myself. I sound like myself, mm -hmm. right? There's only one of you. Yeah. If you want to be the next Ariana Grande, that's great, but there's already Ariana Grande, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you can take your influences and make a nice little unique mix of who you are because that's what you have to offer to the world. Yeah, awesome. And that's, gr that's great advice for the young musicians out there. Um, so I think that's all the questions I have for you right now. So well, you're going to play us a song very, yes, very quickly here. Um, looking forward to hearing that. But um, thank you so much for joining us, Ashley. It was really nice chatting with you. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you on the next episode. Here's a song I wrote. It's called Someone Like Me which is available on all streaming and downloading platforms worldwide. You know how it is. You can find it at my website, which is ashleypater.com, where Pater is spelt later, except the L is a P. <laughs> I've said that many times, and you can find me there too. Honey, in the morning, I'm awake with you on my mind, still thinking about last evening. Loved you in the fluorescent light I got a confession Wondering why you didn't stay the night Do you have a girlfriend? If so, tell me what she's like Cause she got a dark hair of her waist She wears the same damn ring every day She mean the world's not spinning And you cannot think straight Cause I do And you know it too I can tell by the way you talk, by the way you move Cause I do And I know it too It's the way you look at me, what can I do? If the way you look at me is not the way she looks at you Then that's tough Sounds like you need some love Maybe from some like me They keep asking about you Even before I knew your name Got me falling, call it that, that. I'm in need of some Medicaid Intentional plans Unintentionally canceled Got me feeling a little bit messed Because I don't know how to follow a schedule But does she? Does she got a dark hair full of waist She wears the same damn ring every day She made the rules out spinning And you cannot think straight Cause I do And you know it too I can tell by the way you talk By the way you move I do And I know it too It's the way you look at me What can I do? If the way you look at me Is not the way she looks at you Then that's tough Sounds like you need some love Maybe from some like song, like song